Good morning, and welcome back to this Newman Lumen series. My name is Allison Pelkies, and I serve as the Multi-Faith Coordinator for Religious and Spiritual Life at Elon. It is my pleasure to put together this Newman Lumen series. In choosing the theme, Bridging to Hope, University Chaplain Jan Fuller and I were hoping to bring you some moments of comfort, but also some opportunities to fuel your need for resilience this year. Thank you so much for sharing your stories, your reactions to our speakers, and for continuing to interact with us in the comments on this blog. This morning, we hear from Coach Charlotte Smith. Coach Smith has spent the past 18 years coaching Division I women's basketball. She joined the Elon community in 2011 and has continued to support our student athletes during that time. Prior to becoming a coach, she spent 12 years playing professionally herself. And not only is Charlotte a coach, she also is an author. She wrote When Coaches Pray, which is a 40-day devotional written specifically for coaches to help them navigate the life of being a coach. So at this time, Jeff, who is filming, and I are going to leave the space so that Charlotte can remove her mask and speak to you now. So without further ado, here's Charlotte. Good morning again. It's thankful Thursday, as I like to say, and I'm in I'm so grateful for the Truett Center for this opportunity to share my life experiences that have helped me learn bridging to hope. Hope, hope is a powerful thing that inspires us to believe and to do the impossible. Hope is what inspired my college coach to defy the odds and believe that despite the fact that we were down by two points in the national championship game, the biggest game of our lives, that we would go for the win instead of the tie. It is experiencing that moment of hope that has shaped my life to believe the impossible in order to achieve what seems to be impossible. It taught me that believing in a different outcome despite current circumstances could be a bridge to hope. Hope, hope is a powerful thing that helps us carry on during difficult times. Hope is what helped to carry me through the painful experience of losing both my mother and father at an early age. The hope that I found and continue to find is in God's word, which strengthens me each day. Hope, it helps us to believe for a better and brighter future. When I think about hope, one of the first things that comes to mind is growing up as a little girl and a song that we used to sing in our church. That song is called, Because He Lives, and it states, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow knowing that God will give me the strength for each day that I encounter. He will give me both the strength, courage, and wisdom needed. Because he lives, I do not have to fear the future because it is secure in him. And although I may not know what my future holds, I know who holds my future. And that gives me an eternal hope, a hope that sees beyond this current world into an everlasting covenant of victory. And because Christ lives in me, the hope of glory, I know that there is nothing that a day will bring that I cannot face with his strength. As a young girl, this was just one of the songs that helped to shape my future. You see, I grew up on a dead end street in the small town of Shelby, North Carolina. And on that dead end street, there were a lot of dead end things happening, but I knew that a dead end would definitely not be my future. I knew that as Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I have a future and a hope. And what I've come to realize is that the word of God is what has always given me hope. It is what has sustained me over the years. The word of God has always been that bridge to hope for me. It has always been the anchor for my soul and I have my parents to thank for introducing me to that living hope. It is my parents' legacy of love that inspired me as a little girl to see the best in humanity, to believe that there's more good in the world than there is evil, and to always remain hopeful no matter what I face. My father was a pastor and my mother was a missionary. 
I watched their love on display for all mankind from all walks of life. There is something so transformative when we can see past the flaws and faults of others to see the best in them. This is something I saw modeled by my parents, which would forever shape my identity. I knew that I wanted to be an agent for change, an agent for good in this world, to inspire and to give hope, to extend compassion and grace every day, knowing that we all fall short of God's glory. In order to continually have hope, I've learned early in life that sometimes you have to look beyond what you see in order to define and shape what you believe. The Bible calls it calling those things that be not as though they were. When Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream, he was looking beyond what he saw into a future of hope where we all could be judged by the content of our character. Our hope in our futures, our hope in humanity will either be strengthened or shaken by what we choose to focus on the most. We live in a world where negativity and the bad is almost always glorified and magnified, but choosing a life that focuses and dwells on the good is what keeps me hopeful. What is hope? Webster defines hope as a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. And I think we could extend that far beyond feelings into action. And my hope is that I share something with you today that will encourage you and inspire you to keep pushing forward no matter what comes your way. My mother used to sing this song that said, if I can help somebody as I travel along my way, then my living shall not be in vain. As I said earlier, I grew up on a dead end street where a lot of dead end things were happening. I knew at a young age that I wanted my life to be different for my family. I vividly remember those Sunday drives after church where we would hop in the car and drive down to the lake. There were so many big beautiful houses on the lake and we would drive by every Sunday to keep that feeling of expectation alive and that desire of a better life alive in our hearts. Seeing that lake and the houses gave me hope that one day I would be able to purchase my mom and dad a house in that neighborhood. I saw getting a college education and potentially being able to play professional basketball as an opportunity, as a bridge to that hope that I had as a little girl. But that hope was shaken on September 23rd, 1996, when I lost my mother. As Charles Dickens says, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. I had just recently been drafted by the American Basketball League to play professional basketball and to live out my childhood dream. I was selected to play for the team called the Colorado Explosion. And so my family, we all packed up and we dro drove across country to start my professional career. And what would happen next felt like the Colorado Explosion. I remember my arrival to my new townhouse so vividly as my mom was walking around and admiring my new home. And she looked around and she said, hmm, I like new stuff. And I was tickled and excited because I knew that someday I would be able to purchase her a new home. As the night began to progress, she began to feel pain in her chest. And we thought that it was heartburn. And so we treated it as such to no avail. And so eventually she was admitted to the hospital where she succumbed to double pneumonia. The last time I was able to communicate with my mother was while I was sitting at her bed in the, in the hospital where she was connected to all of these tubes. She was highly sedated and resting and she woke up just long enough to peer down to the edge of her bed to see me crying. And she looked at me and softly said, don't cry, baby girl. Everything's coming up roses. Those were the last words that she would ever say to me. Don't cry, baby girl. Everything's coming up roses. And I've spent the last 24 years reflecting on her words. And I've come to realize that everything is coming up roses is a statement that is reflective of life because you cannot accept the beauty of the rose without the accompanying thorns. 
This life will be filled with both good and bad, joy and pain. John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in you, that in me, you may have hope. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Yes, everything is coming up roses. And when you think about everything, it encompasses the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they all work together, as Romans 8 and 28 says. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So perspective is everything. When I reflect on the statement, everything is coming up roses, I see my mom in the worst condition of her life, in a moment where she could be angry, bitter, complaining, full of disappointment. Yet she chose to remain full of hope and left me with the charge of always remaining hopeful, despite of things I may be going through personally and despite of everything going, around, going on around me. There is a saying that ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that they allow to get in them. So don't let what is happening around you get inside you and weigh you down. And there's so much going on around us right now. So many things if we allow them to get inside of us that could completely weigh us down. We must remain steadfast, immovable, steadfast, hopeful, continually seeking to do good and seeing the good in humanity. It is my mother's words, her last words, everything that is coming up roses that has sustained me during this pandemic because it helps me to put everything in perspective. We can see the glass half full, half empty, or better yet, overflowing. We get to choose. There's a song that says, if I never had a rainy day, I would never know you could brighten my way. If I never had to shed a tear, I would never know that you were always near. If I never had some loneliness, I would never know of your friendliness. If I never fell to the ground, I would never ever know that you could help me rebound. I would never ever know you this way. It is in the difficult moments that we begin to discover more of who we are and more of who God is. We can complain because rose bushes have thorns or rejoice because thorns have roses. And just like thorns, life has a way of pricking us sometimes and causing us pain. But it is in pain that we realize the power that resides in us to rise up from the ashes of defeat, despair, and disappointment, to fly to heights that we've never seen before. The truth of thorn, or the thorn of truth, I should say, is that God gives and he takes away. But what gives me hope is that I know that I shall see my parents again someday. Hope is about leaning on the word of God for me and knowing that somehow in the midst of mayhem, we will somehow arrive at amen. I found a note that my mother wrote as she loved to scribble and write, and it said, hope is anything that points to the future. And that's so true. Hope is about seeing a better and brighter tomorrow, pointing us to a future full of expectancy despite of what we see. Hope is about having a dream and holding on to that dream until it manifests itself. Hope is about knowing and believing that God is near to the brokenhearted. Hope is about knowing and believing that God gives beauty for ashes. Hope is about knowing and believing that truly everything is coming up roses. In one of Chaplain Fuller's recent reflections, she posed the question, as the world groans around us, what holds you steady in the wobbly time of grief, anxiety, division, worry, and even quarantine? The answer for me has been, and will always be, the Word of God. It is what anchors my soul. It has always been 
my bridge to hope. Therefore, in closing, I say, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Thank you and God bless.